Do I ask Ryan to come? Because I think Ryan has been so successful since he had his surgery. I just want to kind of hear, you know, you guys to hear what motivates some people. I mean, you guys hear me all the time, you know, what, what motivates me and, you know, why I do what I do. But I'd like Ryan to share his story because I think Ryan has had a huge transformation. Um, I'm currently uh, about 192 pounds down from my heaviest Ooh. weight. Wow. Um, you know, like all of you guys, I've tried every diet that you guys can imagine. Um, I've gained weight, lost weight all my life. I'm currently 31 years old, but I've been heavy since junior high. Um, story of most of you guys all here. Um, really active as a kid, um, so I always played sports. But throughout the years, life took its place. I had kids at an early age. You know, the same story a lot of people have. Busy, worked 80 hours a week. Um, had a desk job, made every excuse that you guys could possibly imagine um, as to why I was overweight. Um, it just, um, finally, you know, I have um, three wonderful kids. I've been married uh, now 10 years, actually, as of uh, two weeks ago. Um, and uh, I've had a lot of support with my family. Um, but I was never happy with myself. Um, I started seeing my kids grow up, um, never went to the beach with them, um, never swam, never went to amusement parks. I was always worried about how I looked. Um, and it was uh, depressing. I was seeing everyone grow up around me, and I was sitting off on the sidelines. Um, and finally, I, I was like, you know, I'm done with this. I've, um, I've tried everything I could possibly imagine. I lost the weight before. I gained it back, um, never to a point where I'm at now. And finally, I decided, you know what, I need to go do something about it. Um, so I started through the process, um, met Dr. Yadiger, and um, never turned back. But I always did let make sure that fitness and eating healthy, never eating, never making any more excuses. Once I started on this journey, I was, I was set on making sure that I didn't use any excuse to kind of steer off path. Um, still to this day, uh, I still haven't. Um, there's not a single day I can say that I've um, cheated, and I just don't let myself now. Um, I did that all my life. Um, so, you know, I had surgery on February 21st. I was released two days after. Um, immediately started walking around the block. Um, before, about two months before that, I couldn't walk to the mailbox. Um, it's same story as most of you guys. You, you just, it's the, the wear that it puts on your body was just tremendous. And, um, but I wasn't going to let it get me down, so um, I did. I started walking. I moved from walking to hiking. I moved from hiking to running stairs at the football fields. Once again, didn't have a gym membership at the time. I just, whatever I could possibly do, I started, um, started doing. Um, Push-ups when I woke up in the morning. Sit-ups when I woke up in the morning. Um, just tried to make the most of everything. Um, never cheated on my diet. I stuck to Dr. Yadiger's plan to the T and never cheated. Um, made sure I made my protein goals, that I kept my carbs low, that I hit my calorie goals. I tracked everything. To this day, I still weigh every single thing that, puts in, that gets into my mouth. Um, if it's not something that's um, planned before, I don't eat it. I plan out all my meals the week before, and um, that's part of my life now. I've met his wife <laughs> up in a tree. Uh, <laughs> we did, I ended up finding his wife in the tree, and she goes, I know you, we were ziplining. So, <laughs> do you plan to go out to dinner? I, I will not go to a restaurant unless I've actually gone on the internet, looked at their menus, gone on MyFitnessPal, or whatever, planned out what I'm going to eat, so I know exactly what I'm going to eat that day. Um, we share meals. If, if it's something too large, I bring boxes home. Um, and actually, I'm one of those people who will actually ask for a to-go box the second I order my food. Um, I set my food aside as soon as I get my food. So all that's in front of me is the food that I'm going to be eating. Um, so yeah, no, I will not go out to dinner unless I've actually found something on that menu that I'll eat beforehand. Um, otherwise, you do get caught up in and just that excitement of seeing something great on the menu. We've all been there before. Um, and all of a sudden you're ordering, I mean, my brain wants to eat like this, but we can only eat like that. So I do plan ahead on all that. Um, 
Every Sunday night, my wife and I plan out my meals for the entire week. Um, we freeze them every morning. I pack up my lunches, and I'm off to work. Um, about two months after surgery, um, I actually ran my first 5K mud run. Um, so I was um, really excited about that. Since then, I've actually ran eight mud runs, and I've done a 10K. Um, and I'm uh, really active. I um, ride my bike a um, couple days a week. He's going to come ride with us. Yes. Um, and I also, three days a week in the morning, I actually wake up first thing in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, and run three miles. I have a personal trainer now that I see three to four times a week. And the other days, I'm either hiking with my kids, hiking with my wife. We ride my bike. I just try to stay active. Um, last Friday, um, I couldn't make it on to the gym that day, um, so I actually went to the local football field and ran the bleachers. Um, I don't have to get into the gym now. I found that. Um, it does help to have somebody there supporting you, showing you the right ways to do it, showing you the right ways to work your muscle groups. I found that um, I don't have much loose skin. A lot of that attributes to, I think, me lifting weights, being active, physically active, not just losing fat and muscle, I've tried keeping the muscle mass um, while still losing weight and staying active, which has also kept my energy levels up. Um, I don't feel weak. Um, most people would say that when you lose, this, lose weight rapidly, you lose a lot of muscle and obviously you're a lot weaker as well. Well, by me staying active, I've um, been able to stay um, strong and feel energized, um, working out, um, focusing on core uh, body strength. Before I couldn't balance on, I couldn't, I couldn't balance myself properly. Now just my core is so strong now, um, pretty much anything at the gym, before I tried to bench press, I couldn't even keep an empty bar level just because I had no core strength on being able to do that type of activity. Uh, now I have no issues with that and it's because of trying to just staying active, working those muscle groups <coughs> and doing it consistently. Um, but like he was saying, it, it doesn't require you having to go to the gym. There's no excuse that why you can't wake up and do a couple sit-ups or walk around the block. While everybody can go walk down the block, doesn't you don't have to race, you don't have to run. And I found that I was really hard on myself at the beginning, that looking over next to me at somebody that was doing bench pressing, doing 400 pounds. I'm like, I'm sitting here doing 50 pounds and I'm struggling. Well, you know, everybody has their own journey. Um, I don't have to worry about doing that. Um, because this is what I'm doing. Um, stop caring about what other people said. And, um, you know, I've actually had, since then, people actually coming up to me at the gym, hugging me at people that I'd never even met, but they had seen me there pushing every day and there every day, dedicated to it. And, you know, kind of put a smile to my face. You don't really think that other people are looking at you. I look on the sidelines. I'm this overweight guy that can't lift weights, that can't do anything. Um, However, people were noticing the changes I was doing. They were noticing that I was trying my hardest out there. Um, and that felt good, just kept pushing myself. And I still, to the day, still do that. I wouldn't say it's a, um, I've hit my destination because my journey never ends. Um, this is a lifelong journey that we all go through. I've hit my weight goal on where I want to stay and I'm happy at where I want to stay. But then you always have the next thing. Now I have my lifting. Now I, I want to build muscle. There's always something else that you want to do, and that's great for you to always have something to strive for. Um, this is a lifelong change that we've made, whether it be diet and exercise or um, just b being physically happy about yourself. Um, and it, it, I have no regrets about it. I'll honestly tell you, my wife had said the same thing as you did before I had surgery. Um, she said, well, does this mean I have to make two meals a day now? And I said, no, you don't. Um, I, said, I said, we change it up a little bit. Instead of doing that unhealthy thing, we'll substitute that with some veggies. Um, you make that full, that full meal. Um, and you'll eat what you can out of it. And you eat what you, what you do. I, I mean, so if you make chicken and you make some other stuff with it, she eats what she wants to eat, and everybody else has, has what they eat. Um, it's, you don't have to eat that entire thing. We've now, um, my, none of my kids have ever been overweight. Um, however, they now eat a lot healthier since I've had the surgery. You kind of just adapt to it. Um, my wife's always been pretty small. 
Um, but even she's, um, she has lost weight since I've had the surgery. You just kind of, that lifestyle change, everybody just kind of around you kind of takes over that. I decided when we started going bicycle riding that he needed to get faster. So he decided to start working out and start watching what he eats. And he lost about 40 pounds. He also lost the weight. And now we come together with our we come together with our meals and we share a lot of meals. If we go out, we share a lot of meals. We at this point in time, when we eat in the old days, in, in the old days, especially when the kids were living at home, all the food went on the table. Now, you know, that family dining thing. Now it stays on the kitchen counter. We cut what we need, we put it on our plate, we eat our meal, that other, other stuff gets divided up for lunches, and that's kind of how we do it now. And you'll actually find what works for you guys as a family. And, and you'll find that her healthier choices will eventually spur healthier choices your way too. And, it, and I'll be honest, in, in this eight years, it hasn't been 100% easy. It, it truly hasn't always been easy. Anybody who can tell you wherever they are, whether they're eight years, six years, nine months, whatever it is, none of it's, all, none of it's an easy road, I'll be perfectly honest. But you want to know something? If you're dieting, if you're following a traditional plan, guess what? It's not easy either. Cultures. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm Hispanic, and when I was a kid, I had to finish everything on my plate. If not, you know, it would be there for breakfast. Exactly. Yeah. And so now I've had to rethink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've had to rethink, and and what six, what I, what works for for me and my clients is portion control. Mm -hmm. I the size everything. of your fist with the size of your palm, I, and never feeling full, because. What the body doesn't utilize, what it doesn't burn, it's going to store. Store fat. Right. And, and, and for the women, you know, we store it here. And for the men, we store it here. Yeah, my husband So we've had to almost retrain the body, retrain the mind from what, like you said, what society is, is, is told us. The thing is, is just like Ryan said, I weigh everything. I have to scale. If I'm making a sandwich, I get out two and a half ounces of lunch meat, a half an ounce of cheese. I mean, I still weigh my food, so. I have a pocket scale that I bring to restaurants with me. Do you really? I have to see that. Yeah, I got it on Amazon. <laughs>